this is an introduction to mono cartridges. Um, <clears throat> many of you have uh, mono recordings and uh, you might be wondering whether to play them with a stereo cartridge or mono. Uh, you can play every mono record with a stereo cartridge, but there are also mono cartridges available that were made especially to play mono recordings and such cartridge is this which is an uh, audio technica 8033 mono and this is the 50th anniversary edition version and uh, you know as this is the real world audio channel i'm showing you things which are real world solutions so i'm not looking for the best uh some like no cost object situations here uh this is something uh, that's uh, that's a treasure uh i think many of you have heard the the lyra company who make uh cartridges and they are considered to be uh one of the top cartridge makers in the audiophile sector <laughs> And uh, Lyra's uh, cartridge maker, he considers this cartridge the only mono option. So if you can't afford the Lyra, then uh, get this. And, and actually his recommendation is uh, spot on. I can really recommend this cartridge. It's at a fraction of the cheapest Lyra's uh, price. However, this is truly a magnificent cartridge and uh, unfortunately for many it's a low output moving coil cartridge so it has a 0.35 millivolts output and that means that you will need a step up with it so an mc step up and uh, let's see first what this mc thing is probably i think <coughs> excuse me <coughs> most of you already know What's the difference between uh, a moving magnet and moving coil cartridges? So we have, uh, this is the cantilever and at the end we have the stylus. So that's your diamond tip. And the cantilever itself, that's the thing that you can see. So you see if you look on the side, can we see, focus there? No, can't really see it. It's, it's really small. Oh, there it is. You see? There is the cantilever. So that's the cantilever. And with naked eye, you cannot see the stylus. It's so tiny. And if you can see the stylus with the naked eye, it means that it's such a big stylus that it doesn't really fit at the bottom of the grooves. So if, if we check, let's see, like this is the, the groove of the record. And if your stylus is, is this big, that you can see it with the naked eye, then it doesn't reach the bottom of the groove. So it means that the low level information will not be played. It's not revealed, not read from the from the groove. But if the groove is like that, and you have a micro line stylus, which is like this, actually it, it, it would ride in the groove like that. And then it can reach to the bottom of the groove and read out the information that's contained at the bottom of the groove itself. So that's why uh, the, the stylus, uh, the tip configuration matters a lot. And then this is the typical elliptical stylus and that's like a microline um, profile. However, let's get back to stereo and mono. So here we have our stylus, we have our cantilever, we also have a suspension, so somehow this is attached to the body of the cartridge and at the end, for stereo cartridges, we have in a V shape. And, and if it's a moving magnet, then we have two magnets, one magnet here, the other magnet here, and they are off by 90 degrees to each other. And uh, in the groove, uh, so if we see that this is the surface of the record, this is the direction where one of the channel is written, and that's the direction where, this is an arrow, so that's the direction where the other channel is written. And the average of these two channels 
produces the, the groove itself. And as, as the uh, stylus is moved by the, by the groove, then as, as these magnets are moving and there's a coil around them, they induce electricity in the coil and the two ends of the coil are going out to the cartridge pins and this is where you hook up your cartridge so you see so this is where your cartridge pins are these are the ends of the coil and in the case of a moving magnet cartridge then the magnets are moving and the coils are fixed and in this case uh, uh, the the issue is that the magnets are really heavy compared to the much lighter coils so so when the stylus is moving and then it has to move this entire cantilever assembly it has to move a lot of weight so it means that the tiniest details are lost it cannot pick up low detail level however if you have here coils attached instead of the magnets they are much lighter uh, and the magnets are attached to the cartridge body then much finer resonances can be made by this assembly it's because it's much lighter and as you know if something is lighter it can move faster and that's pure physics so that's why moving coil cartridges uh, can pick up uh, greater detail level so this is the scenario for a stereo uh, situation and then in the groove, we have the groove uh, depth and, and it's, it's modulated in both of these directions. What happens for in the case of a mono? So then if we look at the, like if we are looking uh, like uh, frontally at the groove, the same uh, perspective as in the stereo, then the movement there is just lateral. So there is no vertical, no up and down component to the signal. The, oh, everything is written left to right, left to right. So, so the stylus is, if you look at it, so it's moving this direction alone. For a stereo cartridge, it moves up and down as well, up and down, left to right. And uh, so this is mono. However, this was mono in the era when they cut mono records with mono cutter heads. Since we have stereo equipment, uh, people have been using stereo gear, stereo lathes to cut mono records. And it, in that case, uh, the mono information is, is still cut in this fashion, but it's cut with, with, with this type of uh, scenario when they are using two magnets. And, uh, and in that case, if, if the both channels have equal information, then it will give a purely up and down movement. So, so when they cut the mono record with a stereo cartridge, one of the coil has, is fed out of phase information. So this has the music and this has the music out of phase. And then because of that out of phase component, so when this is going down, that's going up. So the up and down movement is cancelled out and there's only the lateral components. However, if there's a tiniest mismatch between the coils, it will not be strictly left and right, but it will be slanted. It's going left and right and, and slanting towards one direction. And now let's see what's the effect of that. So when we have uh, cartridges to read uh, the signal read mono then there are several types if you look at the cheapest cartridge category like $50 maybe even up to $100 you will find that they are simply stereo cartridges and they connect together the wires so if this is the negative negative positive positive then the two positives are connected internally together and the two negatives are connected as well and it has two cartridge pins, negative and positive. And we have the two, cart uh, two coils paralleled for the output of a cheapo mono cartridge, which is internally a stereo cartridge, but output is mono. This is not the most fortunate situation. 
because uh, there is quite a bit of smearing of the signal plus if you have like a raw uh, budget cartridge you have a very poor stylus a very uh, heavy cantilever assembly and and you are plusing and or minusing the channels so so there's a an, an error produced also between them and you are picking up this way with the stereo cartridges this up and down component from the record as well and the up and down component is the one that contains most of your surface noise so that's why the mono records are so much quieter because they do not pick up the up and down movement however when you have internally the stereo assembly it will pick up the up and down movement and even though you null them out but there's the slightest misalignment between the two uh, it, it will cause allow some of the pops and hisses and, and 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 issues to come through so so those car i would say avoid those really cheap mono cartridges they don't do anything which are stereo inside and just monoed out uh, just get a, a decent stereo cartridge and then play back your mono records using that and there is there are two mono cartridges which have only one moving magnet or one moving coil so when it moves from side to side it induces electricity in in the coil side to side and and it has this the coil has these two connects to the two pins and the cartridge and you can listen to that and in these cases these are the early mono cartridges or and uh, they do not have vertical compliance so it means that they can move only in this direction they can track the signal but if there is a, a modulation in the groove so the groove is shallower or deeper they cannot track that so one thing that will happen is that they will start if, if this happens when you play a stereo record then they will start to bounce around and it will also uh, affect the cartridge as well stress the cantilever stress the suspension assembly stress the magnetic structure because uh, the magnet will start to rub against the coil uh, because it's not designed to move up and down and and also because there is no compliance it will also damage your record so if you have like a true mono cartridge that has one coil inside then do not play stereo records on that if you have a fake mono cartridge that's connected on the inside they are essential stereo cartridge you can also play stereo records in it and they will sum the output out as mono but the result is not nearly as good as a true mono where you have only one coil and it's not picking up the up and down noise component from the record and because it doesn't sum up the lateral movement it gets the lateral movement purely then uh, it also has a much much better resolution and that's where mono magic happens and uh, however there's this issue that for this case you will need a stereo system that has only one channel and now we are in the stereo age so all of our systems have two channels so what can you do if you have a regular stereo system but you want to go switching between stereo and mono uh, you everyone has figured out me too <laughs> early on that if you play uh, mono in a stereo system it doesn't work and that's because you set up your speakers let's see you have your two speakers sitting on your stands here and you have set it up for uh, stereo and then you have a nice stereo image in the center and uh, you can enjoy it from your couch but if you play mono in this by taking out one channel and just listening it from the left it will sound really bad the imaging will be off uh, and 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 it's, it's just a very disappointing experience. In this case, you have to move around the speaker and find out which is the best position for mono, which always will be totally different than using a pair of speakers. So even if you have the same speaker, but using one, 
the optimal position for that single speaker is very different compared to a pair of speakers. So one solution for that, in, and that's the solution that I found, is to be introduced in the next part. So stay tuned because we are going to continue in a second.